Again, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's start. Hello. Uh, good morning. Good mm. afternoon. And uh, good evening. Uh, welcome you to the World River and the Delta Systems Source to Sync webinar series. And it, this webinar series is co-hosted by uh, North Carolina State University. University, Louisiana State University, and the State Key Lab of Estuary and Coastal Research, East China Normal University, and uh, Utrecht University. So uh, today is our great honor you invited Professor Sagi Choruf from uh, uh, Loma North of Moscow State University of Russia come here to talk about uh, Lena River. And we have a couple guest uh, uh, a colleague have already talked about Lena River, but uh, this is the uh, first uh, colleague from Russia talk about this river. So uh, it's, uh, it's not easy, but uh, uh, it's a great, uh, I'm very glad uh, Dr. Uh, Sagi can make it. So uh, before I introduce uh, Sagi, uh, and uh, like mentioned, since uh, August 2020, uh, two years uh, two years ago, you know, we during the pandemic we started this webinar series. So far, we have already hosted 127 talks. All talks, including this one, will be and have already. Uh, archived on our YouTube channel. So you are welcome to take advantage of these great resources for your research or teaching purpose. Uh, at the same time, we are also maintaining a source to sync uh, Twitter account. So you, uh, we will announce the, the upcoming talks and some research news. So you are welcome to follow us on Twitter and uh, at the same time, next Wednesday, next Wednesday, the same time, and we will have David Mosa from, uh, uh, he's now currently working at UN, but uh, he uh, original from University of New Hampshire, uh, come here to talk about Northwest Atlantic Middle Ocean Channel, a river beneath the sea. Uh, will be a very interesting source to think of perspective. So uh, uh, once again, Professor uh, Sergei Chorov uh, from uh, Moscow State University in Russia, as you can see here, he original graduate from Moscow State University and uh, uh, is uh, working uh, short term, uh, you know, uh, as a research uh, associate professor, uh, I guess a joint professor in Poland and also. Uh, you know, professor at uh, Moscow State University. Uh, his research mainly focused on sediment quality, quantity, remote sensing application in hydrology, fluvial process, stream ecology, and biodiversity. And since 2011, he coordinated integrated catchment study over the uh, uh, Buck Hill Lake uh, area, as also as the field based project over the river system of Russia, mainly the uh, large Arctic rivers, Ob, uh, Yersin, Lena, uh, uh, Karam, you know, all, all those, even the small one, and even the high latitude, Sweden and Mongolia one. So uh, it's a great honor again. Uh, uh, Sergey, so now is uh, I'll give the floor to you. <clears throat> um, so I just start my uh, screen and uh, yes. Uh, so firstly, I would like to, of course, to thanks a lot. Uh, Professor Paul Liu for arranging this excellent uh, seminar. It's uh, a big honor to be here and to make a talk, as well as it's a great uh, both pleasure and a big um, sort of value to have these lectures online. And uh, really what you said, we 
and use it in teaching and it is a big big uh, reach to uh, uh let's say different countries from the international science in uh, terms of river research and sediment in particular and um, yeah, from this, I would uh, go to the topic of my talk to the Lena River. And uh, so this is uh, the one of the, uh, we call these uh, rivers, which were mentioned in this short uh, uh, information uh, about our studies. So this is one of the, let's say, three pillars, which uh, goes to the Arctic from uh, the territory of Russia, the Opianisi and Lena is the three biggest one in this uh, northern Part of Eurasia, so the scales just for that sort. I put this um, uh, map on the uh, right down corner, so you can imagine the size of the catchment. It's a huge, and uh, this is maybe the main uh, sort of uh, specific, um, let's say, feature of this area. It's this size, and uh, this area is completely covered by by the permafrost it's the second uh, specific feature of the uh, Lena area and uh, if we look on the map of Edomer so this frozen um, earth uh, distribution of the northern hemisphere we will see this exactly again the Lena river is uh, maybe the number one hot spot in the in the distribution of Edomas which is the uh, our of a big, big interest for hydrologists and hydrochemists of the world at the moment due to the um, thaw. And at the same time, the river is the, is the big and uh, completely natural. So in terms of that snow, almost except of the training rocks, which are uh, done here for a uh, long period uh, to support the navigation, in the river is not really somehow affected by the human activities and so this is the second point why why we can be a lot of interested in that and also in terms of the regulations we can say it's the largest unregulated river it's only maybe something like three percent of its flow is uh, somehow uh, impacted by the uh, reservoirs but the main stem of the Lena river is completely out of any any interventions and uh, from this point uh, I would jump to the part which is more related to hydrology and to what I would talk about. It's the uh, long-term um, monitoring, which is the basement of our knowledge about the river. And actually, in many uh, recent studies for the Arctic, uh, this um, Information from this uh, frost hydromet is called. So it's the uh, facility who operates the monitoring station in the um, territory of uh, Russia. This um, uh, data, which we have, it's currently all this huge territory, which is um, uh, partly uh, feeds the main, is compared to the size of the Europe, is uh, includes on this. Uh, 254 gauging stations uh, where the um, water level or water discharge are operated at the moment. So um, in terms of what we have in the past, it's uh, go down like in the most of the territory in Siberia. And so uh, with the sediment, which will be the main feature of my talk later on, is uh, the situation even more let's say specific, it's uh, only 95 gauges where the monitoring of the sediments are done. And it's, it's only suspended sediments and no constant or long-term monitoring of the bed load. So that's, we can forget about it here. And uh, also if we look on the, just the main stem of the river, the uh, closest to the, uh, the, the, the most downstream station where at the moment the sediment concentration is measured, is located in the middle part of the river. It is in the, uh, near the city of Yakutsk, which for those who visited uh, Lena River, and here firstly appeal to my colleagues from Germany who worked a lot in the Delta. Uh, uh, so that's the, the main uh, route to the north goes through the Yakutsk. And here we have the, most um, downstream stations which at the moment um, supports all the information about the 
flux of the sediments on the in the long term perspective. So whereas in the past there was few stations just in the main downstream, but the moment they're not uh, done. So and uh, from this uh, anyway, from this information, we have two main uh, things to learn about the land itself, and then to formulate the um, uh, um, specific goals, objectives of my talk. The first is the situation, which is quite important in the, um, uh, today's climate perspective of the uh, climate change and hydrological implications. It is the uh, situation with the um, <clears throat> changes of the uh, river runoff, of the water runoff. So I would uh, maybe firstly uh, put your attention on this um, uh, figure. Uh, which shows the increase of the water runoff in, in the main downstream part of the Lena um, Basin. So this is the Kusir station. And in the recent decades, we observe here the increase of the uh, water runoff. And also there was the uh, turn to the increase of the sediments uh, concentration and the sediments load in this area. And this is the most contradictive part of the story, which can be uh, learned now from this long-term monitoring for these regions. So in my these two slides, you can see both the upper parts and the middle part of the catchment. And this uh, downstream part of the catchment, which is more located here. And so, so what we have uh, two uh, important things from these graphs to see is that if we go to the upper and middle part of the river and uh, uh, to the to the main tributaries of the river, we will see the um, tendencies to to, for the decrease of the sediment yield on the most of the stations around the land catchments. And so uh, this can be in some way um, easily explained with the mining activities drop, which happened in the 90s in the area. And it was the huge source of the sediment supply to the river system. We can explain it for some exact areas, and this will be very important to talk later with the uh, these few reservoirs which are located also on the tributaries. And here, mostly, we should mention Vilui River. And here is also some tendency to decline with the sediment transfer. But if we go to the main stem of the Lena River and look at the available data sets, uh, we will see the opposite uh, behavior. And we will just uh, look that there is the more, more like a increase of the uh, sediment loads for the recent decades. So, and then we, from this, we are, are interested what's actually going on in the system. What is the sediment transfer system? Is the driven by which factors? And the, so in more, a uh, larger scale, I uh, would show again this culture station with the available data set at, at, until the very end when the sediment concentration was uh, stopped with the measurements. We will, we will see that there is this increase for the, um, since the 1980s to the uh, um, this 2010 for like a tendency with the sediment yield in the area. And of course, then there is a question if this is driven by some sort of the processes with the climate effects on the uh, permafrost on the Yedoma, and if the thermal erosion, which is uh, well known as the important process here in the region, can really be the dominant driver, which um, brings us to this uh, situation in the downstream part of the Lena River. Uh, so I, it's uh, something which I will also announce a bit later. And uh, on the other side, this uh, the graphs with the sediment concentration long term can be uh, related or explained by some methodological drawbacks. And there is many issues which can be discussed here. And uh, we, to we talked about that in special uh, situation, for example, in special, special papers uh, and so discuss this. For example, there is was the change in the methodology of the sampling, exactly the QCUR, which is um, uh, reported in the uh, year, year books uh, of the Ross Hydromets, exactly happens in somewhere in the middle of the 1980s. And for us, it's a big issue. This is the, uh, if we are not faced with the, some, some problems of the methodology. 
But on the other side, this uh, tendency is supported by the other gauging stations, uh, which are located also in the main stem of the lena. So probably this we have some signal from the natural processes, from the catchment process. And also the second thing, which is not the actually the uh, goal or the part of my lecture today, is the sediment budget of the whole area. And it's also very important to see that if we are when we establish the uh, Catchment erosion, with, uh, catchment erosion estimate for the whole in a, a river, and uh, combine it with the estimate of the channel erosion, uh, which was done based on the semi-automatic procedures of the satellite imagery uh, inventory for the main stem, also in the main tributaries of the Lena. We will see that there is a big uh, gap between the amounts of the sediments which are. Um, eroded over the area uh, from the by the catchment processes and the internal processes and the output of the uh, of the sediments uh, output to the Arctic. And then we are wondering what can be if we can see this uh, deposition rate somewhere in the particular cases. Uh, probably we we are faced with some role of the reservoirs, so or maybe we are facing the some important issues with the uh, sink area somewhere in the delta or in the unbranching channels. And from as far as this information is not really um, uh, wide, widely available, uh, the research questions which we are uh, put and which I would follow on the next uh, slides and part of my lecture are related to uh, um, the questions uh, of which drivers affect the long-term sediment yield changes. So there is uh, in the hydrological signal with the water runoff increase, which is observed, as I said before. Uh, and in particular, there is for some areas, it's a big issue with the maximal spring runoff increase. Uh, or there is a therm therm erosion processes intensification, which can be actually the main uh, probably driver of the uh, observed changes in the sediment yields and in general in the sediment behavior. Uh, and I, as I said, we should also look at the reservoirs and uh, the goal of our, this particular talk was to, uh, part of this, our studies in the Lena River was to see the impact of the reservoirs. So then we then aim to the local reaches and I would, I would show what we uh, selected as the case studies, and also to look at the spatial differences along the river channel in sediment transfer based on that. <clears throat> of course, uh, assuming the scale of the uh, catchment which we are worked on, and as far as this is the huge area, so we selected three uh, particular um, areas which we were mostly um, rely on with our um, studies. It is the Vilui. And for that, we call this Vilu area as it's the um, number three uh, third uh, tributary of the Lena in terms of the water discharge. Um, very huge anyway river. And uh, the river is inter interesting for us as far as this contains the largest reservoirs of the, uh, the whole catchment of the Lena. So it's uh, almost 90% of the whole uh, water regulations come from this uh, Vilusky reservoir, which are located here in the area of uh, the big world famous uh, mining uh, in near the Mirny city with the huge um, um, holes in the earth, world famous pictures from here. And the second area is uh, very typical for, let's say, the, the, st the main stem of the Lena River. So if we look on the Lena River, we'll see something like an embranching or predominance of the embranching system from the almost upper part where the uh, river uh, perform the, uh, uh, the wide floodplains until the very downstream parts, the Delta Lena, of course, with some gaps and there is few insist in confined river channels, but then a branching system is the dominant. And we selected this case study near exactly Yakutsk, uh, city of the Yakutia, as the second part of our <clears throat> interest. And uh, the Lena Delta itself, the hugest 
they're also the second largest in uh, the largest in, in, in the uh, Eurasia, in, in uh, the northern Arctic, among the northern Arctic, Arctic rivers, and uh, the delta, which uh, have a excellent infrastructure to rockets uh, with the Samoilov field station, which was built more than 10 years ago, and it was the agora for Russian and German scientists to uh, study these uh, uh, processes in the uh, very northern part of the Eurasia. So, and uh, this was the choice of uh, looking at the uh, exact sediment transfer processes here. So we rely on very abundant field studies, and I would uh, certainly comment the few of them. Are, so of course the base main, let's say basement for the coal studies, the, the traditional method of analysis, the gravimetric analysis, which was uh, we, which was done during the field campaigns during the last five years. And uh, in terms of how and where we worked, uh, so that was the field campaigns since 2016, and new field campaigns in this area, in this area, in the uh, middle part of the Lena River, with different sort of the our uh, measurements were, uh, which we done. The last year, this year, were two field campaigns in the Vilu River, and this year for our team was the first time when we. Uh, got the possibility to work in the Lena Dirt and uh, uh, some of these activities I would also talk about. And uh, of course, to expand the possibilities of the on-site in-seat observations, we used the surrogate measurements and firstly the nephilometry, uh, turbidity meters, which is like a traditional thing. So that's uh, uh, with the traditional way of uh, making the uh, relationship between the gravimetric uh, sediment concentrations done by, done by the filtration to this more fastly uh, um, turbidity measurements. And uh, as far as there's quite big or uh, long story of these uh, measurements, we get quite good relationship which can be used for the regional one for the area in general and then we go to more deep and more complicated part of the story and uh, are actively use the doppler agcp acoustic doppler current profilers to also measure the uh, sediment transfer and uh, sediment loads so this is just the picture to explain why we're interested in making such kind of uh, uh, measurements it is the comparison what we can get uh, when we if we use the traditional methods the water sampling and gravimetric analysis and if we go into the adcp measurements so assuming that for the adcp we need uh, also the calibration curve between the water sampling and the uh, exactly the doppler profile so we assume that we need something like uh, 20 to 50 samples of the water to uh, recalculate the big scatter intensity to the uh, normal sediment concentrations. And then in that case, to build this uh, relationship, we need something like a 60 hours of the sample treatment. And so for this, and then we can go to a uh, large amount of the uh, IDCP profiles, which can be used for uh, sediments, concentration sediment loads. And in case we just use the traditional methods, the timing of our studies will be much higher as far as all these uh, possible profiles we can, we will be, we will have for just with the filtration. And this is the huge heap of time if we, uh, if we uh, look for the, all the methodological uh challenges in this area so and that's why the dcp is important and uh, there were some specific um, things which we developed on the on the um, working in the lena river is the codes which were are um, prepared to process the dcp data firstly the at the moment it's the teledyne data which we have the uh, system for automatic generation. There are three codes which we use. 
and this enable us to have our regional instruments uh, for calculation the sediment loads in the river system based on the uh, this fastly done DCP measurements. So together with discharges, the new our, our area to work with. So and so also when I was so 20 years ago when I was a student and so Lomonos of Moscow State University and stayed on the field training program in the Lena River as well. Uh, and we measured the discharge with the current profiler water discharge with the current profiler and uh, there was no idea even to look at the sediment loads as far as it was too time consuming and the one measurement of the uh, water discharge which was a few days of the work while, while with the ADCP we have for just within one hour we got the full uh, information about the water discharge and even the most downstream parts during the high water and so of course this is very important part of the investigation for uh, the moments and still in quite big uh, methodological uh, things to develop. But anyway, it's already more and more valuable source of uh, information. And we can get not only the sediment load, but also the very, uh, very high resolution information on uh, the um, additional things on the sediments are uh, behaviors such such things like uh, our sediment concentration verticals over the um, cross sections or along the cross sections and so in some way this uh, can be the new also step toward the understanding of hydraulic uh, processes which govern the sediment transfer and in some way, I also will mention this. So we have the original equation for the Lena River to calculate the sediment concentration from the backscatter intensity. And then next, in terms of the scales of the Lena River, the next uh, for all our case studies, the extremely important part of the um, tool or the studies is the uh, impl implementation of the remote sensing data. And so we mostly used the Landsat and recently also started with the Sentinel as the, uh, as the tool to measure the sediment concentration. So there are a few uh, based on simultaneous uh, or on seed observation and the ground truth uh, measurements of sediment concentration, better to say like that, uh, from the uh, remote sensing images, we get few relationships for different situation the middle and downstream part of the Lena River which uh, in some way quite clearly um, explains the difference between these relationships are clear explains with the discharge and with the change of the um, uh, sediment uh, structure of the suspended sediment structure which is the so on the high discharge we have in the river more coarse sediments which are um, transferred in suspension and on the low discharge we are coming to the much finer sediments and this explains the changes in the, the relationship the relationships between the our brightness values of the or reflectance intensities of the our satellite images and the uh, sediment concentrations which are um, measured on CEDU. So and each, each of these relationships then feeds in general to the uh, exact hydrological conditions in terms of the water discharge or then in terms of the uh, sediment structure. And then we try to adapt this to a particular situation in our with the studies. So and uh, this is like uh, maybe the most uh, big or mounting of the information I mean the remote sensing data as far as is the land set for the middle and downstream parts of the Lena River we have the resolution for the uh, last two decades and uh, the images which are for example for the Lena River for the delta of the Lena fits the uh, requirements in terms of the cloudness and in terms of the coverage of the main part of the delta to 
counts the uh, settlement budgets. So this uh, gets up to 45 situations, or sometimes it's not uh, maybe covered the whole hydrological situations, at least in the case of the Lena Delta, but in the uh, middle part of the Lena River, the situation is much more uh, positive in this way. The coverage with the lensed images is, is much better uh, cover the whole information during during the different uh, water discharges. But also for the Lena River, it's uh, for the delta of the Lena River, it's uh, for sure the very important source of information. And uh, for, for this methodology, we applied, we go to this, our three case studies. And the number one is this Vilui River and the reservoirs located in the Vilui River system. Uh, the field campaigns which were done here was aimed to cover uh, the whole uh, reservoir area and to try to count uh, the real impact of the reservoir on the sediment transfer, how much sediments are stored in the, in the river. And if this storage is uh, food alone, uh, refilled with the with the sediment erosion process in the channel. So as uh, also with the uh, application of the remote sensing data, we see that the uh, spatial changes in over the reser reservoir in this area. And uh, with the long term monitoring, which uh, was done on the Vilu River, we uh, came to the few quite important conclusions on what is the uh, these largest reservoirs uh, as a drivers of the water and sediment transfer. The first is that uh, the impacts on the water regime is quite evident here, but it's uh, fully uh, constrained with the Viluri itself. There is no signs of the impact from the Viluri to the downstream part of the Lena River. And uh, this, the metal is the dilution, of course, as far as even in, in uh, scales of the, one of the largest tributaries, the size of the land and of other rivers is too huge to uh, uh, feel the impact of these uh, reservoirs. Uh, the impact on the water regime is mostly uh, dry or is mostly also constrained by the low water season or winter low season when we have the very prominent uh, flattening of the uh, water discharge cars. And in terms of the sediments, uh, the um, combination of the data we got from the satellite imagery and this long-term monitoring with the in-situ observation uh, make us to conclude that uh, something like 40 to 45 percent of the total sediment flow is uh, um, captured, is stored in this reservoir on the Vilui. And the most important also is the food that talk on the Lena River itself is that there is no signatures of these um, retention rates in the sediment yield of the Lena River. This means that uh, the Vilui River is. Uh, are located in this uh, left side of the catchment with the mostly mountain area with very low suspended loads and the bed loads um, rates. And uh, the impact of the reservoir in terms of the total sediment budget in the area is very small. And if uh, to mention the um, one of the challenges which, which was mentioned in the beginning of the talk is the huge our deposition rates in, in, in total catchment budget of the Lena River. We can also conclude that uh, this Vilui water reservoir impact is not so um, important in the total <coughs> sediment export in the river system. And uh, uh, then we need to find the answers on, on the more or less active processes in the uh, more active drivers of the sediment transfers in the uh, Lena main stem. And this is the good bridge for us to go to the uh, second case study to the Lena River near Kutsk city. So those who uh, one time landed in the Yakutsk know this picture very well. It's the river here uh, in the, uh, between the two 
mountain ranges, uh, ridges which uh, closely come in the 50 kilometers up from Yakutsk and downstream from Yakutsk to, to, to the river. So it's the big and a branching ridge. Uh, the ridge is uh, located near the city of Yakutsk uh, and uh, is quite a big combination of the main channel and the smaller uh, flat plain are uh, channels on the both uh, left and right um, sizes uh, sides of the river and so we started from the um, application of the landsat images and counting the um, uh, distribution of the suspended sediments over the river for different uh, geological situation and for different uh, season and so the first thing we faced uh, in the very beginning of our uh, studies is the very con contrast conditions with the suspended sediment concentration, which can be seen in this uh, area during the high water and uh, during the low water. So the high water here is something like uh, 3,000 and something uh, cubic meters per second, and the low water is something below 10 cubic meter per second. So in the difference between these two conditions is the big uh, differences in the water surface. As far as uh, under the this high water discharge, the river comes exactly to the um, center of Yakutsk and floods the very big wide area here. Whereas in the low water, it's concentrated in the main channel and uh, completely not seen and not filled in the city. It's far from there, but in terms of the sediment concentration, we see that so the river goes to the north, and so, so you see the red areas in the upper part of the picture, and the more green and yellow are um, colors in the downstream part. And in the low water area, we have a um, different situation, and this is uh, like an example of what we will try to talk in more details. Later on, so we see that there is in this uh, an abranching system uh, on the reaches where we do not have uh, large tributaries. We have the long, longitudinal decrease of the suspended sediment concentration during the high water and increase during the low water. So the values, uh, of course, of the sediment concentration itself is lower uh, during the low water period and higher during the uh, high water period, so uh, the ranges are different in the colors, but uh, the main tendency is the same. And uh, besides this, before I would talk about these seasonal variations, I would try to fix uh, exactly some special differences in both situation in both um, during the high water and low water seasons. We have a uh, very contrast condition between the uh, flood plain branches, side branches, uh, which are goes on the side areas of the river and cuts the flat plains. It's, in many cases, it's the old remains uh, main channels. And sediment concentration here and in the main channels are completely different. And this difference is uh, clearly seen along these uh, um, side channels. So on the start of the entrance of uh, the of these uh, flood plain channels, we usually have the similar values of sediment concentration. Where, 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 where is it the end? Are uh, the there is the twice decrease of the sediment concentration, and so these changes are typical for both, as I said, so different seasons. And then we are wondering what's uh, what is the case if we have maybe some issues with the application of remote sensing or there is some uh, uh, things related to really sorting and uh, uh, to sink you know, areas in this flat plane uh, um, uh, parts of the branching system <clears throat> and when we compare this uh, observation this uh, satellite space observation with the on-site obse on -site measurements we also see that uh, that their sediment structure is changed a lot 
along these uh, smaller, let's say, smaller rivers as a part of the large rivers. And so this picture, which I really uh, like, is to show the filters from the upper part of this side branch and from the downstream part of this floodplain branch. So the length of this branch is about 20 kilometers, let's say. And you see that along these 20 kilometers, we have the, the, the volume of the filter, its water was completely the same in this experiment. Well, actually, it's not experiment, it's the measurements of uh, sediment concentration. But the, there is the uh, very huge decrease of the uh, of the uh, size of the grain sizes of the suspension suspended matter uh, along the channel, and this confirms the finding or the idea that these uh, side bars is something what uh, side branches something what is. Um, uh, happening in the uh, river system. So, and then uh, uh, we go further to the uh, um, uh, to the um, idea to try to explain what can be this uh, uh, reason for such kind of spatial distribution of the system. And so the main uh, thing which uh, is uh, also bring us to possible explanation is the impact of the hydraulic condition. And we uh, combine our, our remote sensing data with the uh, ADCP measurements of the surface, middle of water and near bottom velocities. So we build such kind of the, uh, the um, maps related to their uh, water velocities in this uh, river reach and try to combine the uh, water velocities itself and the uh, sediment concentration to see if there is some correspondence between this spatial picture of the water velocities and the uh, sediment concentration. And this is, of course, due to this uh, instruments ADCP for the velocities and the uh, sediment concentration for the uh, remote sensing give us a new type of data with that. And we find the correspondence between the uh, water velocities and the sediment concentration. So if we go to the, if we try to, we try to uh, put in a row the different uh, ranges of the uh, water velocities, uh, both surface velocities and uh, middle velocities in, the, uh, in different classes. And for each class, we put all the available information for the suspended sediment concentration. So it was the GIS or analysis done in automatic way with the uh, two uh, layers selection. So, and this tendency to uh, of combination was through the one process with the average uh, values for each class of the water velocities and the average sediment concentration for each of these classes. And we uh, we um, calculated the transport capacity and the transport capacity is even more um, important factor for explaining these changes in the <clears throat> spatial patterns of the sediment concentration. So if we see on the lower values of the transport capacity, which are actually related to the uh, smaller side branches, we will see the big drop of the sediment concentrations here, whereas which actually the driver of the uh, this sink situation in the sidebars. And further on on the main channel, the uh, more constant uh, transport capacity bring to the higher levels of the sediment concentrations. But this is, of course, uh, the picture which explained maybe some spatial patterns, but not the seasonality and long term, term things. And for that, for further processing, we calculated suspended sediment budget based on the specific image processing. So the each cross section, uh, we put the cross section along the uh, studied rivers. The each cross section was consisted of like 400 meters lines. So with the resolution of the as Landsat images, 30 meters, we have uh, quite many points of the sediment concentration and to give us possibility to have the constant value along the river channel of sediment concentrations rates. With this uh, uh, 
uh, values, we go into the uh, calculation of suspended sediment change along the river and for different uh, areas of for each like in this way uh, with this uh, profile of the river system we counted the longitudinal change of the suspended sediments suspended sediment concentration to see the balance uh, of the sedi suspended sediment loads and in case this way with this uh, measures this coefficient let's say uh, are uh, higher than zero it's we are um confirm this is erosional pattern and in terms of the negative values we put it like a depositional patterns and so, so this was the approach which was applied for the on both for this uh, and the branching system and for the delta lena so with with the reach in the uh near the yakutsk we see that's under the low water discharge so here the uh the water discharge on the x axis and this is this uh, suspended sediment budget so we see that during the uh, low water discharge uh, we statistically come to the uh, data that uh, the more um, and the higher uh, longitudinal increase of the suspended sediment con concentration is uh, typically observed whereas on the High water discharges, we are um, statistically significantly see the decline of this process and even more uh, change shifts of the system to the deposition. Uh, the reason for that uh, definitely lay in these changes of the hydraulic conditions along the branching uh, river reach and uh, uh, the floodplain inundation is the main. Uh, think which cake come in the mind when we try to explain these differences. It is on one side and on, on the other side. The low water conditions is the uh, time when we have uh, mostly the summer season. And the summer season with the quite hot temperatures in the Yakutsk area and even sometimes quite uh, also Hot, not hot, but quite warm conditions, even in the Lena Delta, is the area when we have the most uh, significant impact on, on the thermal impact on the or temperature impact on the uh, Yudoma banks. And also, this can be the reason of the activation of the erosion processes during the low water conditions due to this uh, synoptic atmospheric uh, impact. So, and with the with the case study in the Delta Lena, I would uh, go into this in more details. But also, we confirm these uh, remote sensing findings with the um, uh, measurements of the uh, by the ADCP data. And so, we uh, also came to the similar results, making uh, uh, quite uh, detailed uh, network of the. Our cross sections with the DCP, we found that uh, it's up to two, three percent from the river and sediment load uh, is uh, increasing along this ridge during the low water and average flow conditions. And during high water discharges with the DCP data, we did not come to either erosion or deposition. So there is the erosion equals mass of sediment deposition along the ridge. But generally, as far as traditionally, the uh, that's also uh, we don't see there is some contradictions in what we can see from the satellite images. So the main tendency is the same. So erosion dominates on the low water period, and during the high water periods we can see the situation with the more uh, depositional system along the river ridge. We also try to put it in one in one picture with the different applic application of different modeling approach and with the counting of the catchment erosion and channel erosion along the ridge and uh, uh, compare the channel erosion like a volume of the sediments washed annually along this uh, river ridge which was done based on the uh, long procedure i wouldn't talk about it in detail but uh, it's based on the remote sensing as well and uh, reconnaissance of the banks <clears throat> Uh, we see that the channel erosion along this particular uh, and the branching river reaches 
is much it's, it's completely of the another factor uh, uh, compared to catchment erosion from the adjacent territory if we put this catchment erosion as the on the left side as the small catchment which uh, comes to this river so we here we have the channel erosion equals about 10 million stone per year and from the all adjacent catchment the the erosion the, from the wash load is the uh, silence time lower and this channel erosion uh, both with the observed changes along the river system uh, of the sediment load can partly explain then the uh, changes of the sediment load along the river reach. So and uh, fits the possible um, possible uh, explanation related to the processes of the sediment erosion. But of course, then it's uh, time to go to uh, delta of the land. As far as uh, here, the thermal ser erosion process is much more evident and much more, uh, let's say, bright. And uh, delta of the land is uh, was used also in both with this uh, this year field study and where we put the four. Uh, different uh, distributory system as the case studies to uh, confirm the post the findings from the remote sensing data. So there was uh, this uh, geological sediment related related study was quite abundant in terms of the uh, measurements of the discharges, turbidity, and bed material and water sampling. But of course, we were able to cover with an on site observation small part of the land, but it's quite anyway large in terms of the um, real uh, information which ever was ever measured here. And uh, the topic of the uh, the topic of the uh, thermal erosion here is, as I said, the most. Uh, interesting and possibly most important we put and paid a lot of attention to uh, make a maps of the eroded banks and count the different drivers for that why because this is the, as i said the explanation for possible also sedimentation patterns here in the delta <clears throat> and so the situation in general the picture of the sediment balance uh, suspended sediment balance from the Landsat images in the Lena Delta is completely different from what we see near the Yakuts. So uh, if when we plotted the same graph as before in, for the where we have the Yakuts, when we plotted the uh, sediment balance along the river channel, along these four main branches of the Lena Delta versus the water discharge, we didn't see any clear picture. We didn't see that there is some seasonality. And so when we just talked about the middle part of the river, Lena River and the branching system, there is seasonality. It's very important. And here there is some mix of the points with no clear picture. So we tried to play with this data and uh, split the different branches. And here we came to much more sophisticated conclusion. We found that the Bikovsky and Trofimovsky, it's this uh, number one and number two largest branches in the right part of the delta, uh, is mostly erosional system in, so, in terms of the longitudinal changes of the uh, sediment concentration. And uh, the smaller one, the Tumatsky and the Linyovsky, uh, the average values of the uh, sediment balance, sustained sediment balance along this. Uh, Channels and we compared the sediment concentrations in the upper part of the delta with these uh, um, blue boxes in each of the uh, distributory systems of the delta, like an average within this blue box. So it's the procedure to capture the um, um, sediment concentration from the images. Uh, and we have here, like I said, 40 something images for the, for the system. And uh, so we then conclude that there is the special differences between the distributors. And uh, 
what can be the explanation first of this erosion in the delta? So delta is typically is something which is the sink area for uh, the marginal filter and other such kind of roads which usually apply to the delta. But here we do not see anything, uh, at least in the, in the larger uh, branches of the delta. And uh, the possible explanation, again, why we have this uh, dominance of the erosion and erosion, I mean, the increase of the standard sediment concentration along the delta, uh, the, the explanation can be also within the processes of the bank collapse. And there is a big, uh, there is a big, uh, and many pictures which, which illustrate the sediment plumes uh, along the both Bukowska and the uh, Trofimuska. Uh, branches, which uh, then can be the reason for the um, driving of the of the, for the sediment transfer along these branches. So the uh, river bank line, the platform changes is quite uh, impressive here. There is this large part of the delta, both on these larger branches and in the Smaller one as well, but mostly in the upper parts of the delta, uh, is subjected to few meters per year erosion. Uh, can be up to five meters or something. We are not now uh, capable to say the exact values for the whole delta, but it's uh, the the part of the future studies to combine it with these sediment budget pictures. But the system works uh, uh, very intensively. And the most interesting that we then try to see if there is this sediment balance along this main uh, branch, uh, along this distributory system, somehow is in line with the uh, air temperatures. And actually, I would never expect that uh, someone, that I, or someone or I would ever think about making a relationship between air temperature and the sediment loads. But in our case, it's not, of course, the relationship, but it's a tendency, which probably also give us some possibility to um, talk about the links between the uh, sediment behavior and the um, uh, impacts on the uh, Edoma banks and the uh, impacts from the uh, Conditions where the conditions on the um, melting, let's say, uh, melting of the banks. It's, it is also confirmed by the you know, by the visions here in the delta that during the hot hot summer temperatures we are coming to uh, the very intensive um, wash of the sediments from the from the banks, and this can be the the the, the last issue of what I plan to uh talk about in this uh, very contrasting condition of the uh Lena river uh sediment systems so there's few general summary conclusions which are um, mentioned in the slide generally generally all of them i uh, more or less talked about and uh, of course it's uh, only partly can explain the large uh sedimentation uh patterns which are observed in the land river system and i would jump or finish with the uh, acknowledgements to many of my colleagues to uh, those whom we worked together in the fields to the um, uh, colleagues which which we discussed and planned to work together and uh, with very big hopes for the future world Thank you very much. That's uh, great. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sergei, for such a great talk about Lena River. So uh, this is, I think, the first time we begin to know uh, 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 much detail and better such a big picture all the way from the headwaters to the to the delta. This is fantastic. So. Uh, 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 I saw some questions. So, uh, Don Fop, oh, you have to. Oh, you have, he has already left. Um, he has a question. Uh, Saki, are you able to see the chat? Mm -hmm. Don Fop, he said he has to leave, but thank you for a fantastic study. I hope 
often wondered why the sediment load to the linear delta is so much lower than for the Mackenzie. And also the, the increased awareness of the role of air temperature in coastal thermal erosion in the Arctic Ocean. So thank you. So thank you for uh, Professor Forbes for this question. So I, I actually I don't know this situation in the Mackenzie's in terms of the numbers of the sediment loads. Of course, it's an issue to compare, and it's interesting to compare. Uh, I can. Uh, say that in terms of these uh, uh, northern uh, rivers of the Arctic, Lena is, uh, is not something very significant in terms of the sediment load. It's uh, uh, affected by quite uh, large and important process. But for example, if we go to more to the east, and this will be the famous uh, mining areas, Polema River, which is really uh, influenced by the very huge mining activities, and here with the sediment load was much more uh, closer to the some some higher rates of the sediments uh, um, loads of the world rivers. Mm. Yes, so yeah, I think it's what I can say with sediment erosion. Yes, it's quite important. We have you know, there is few studies which showed the. Uh, importance of the coastal erosion in the Arctic or sediment delivery. And it's, of course, important also to expand this knowledge to the river system to see what can be the river in a contribution compared to the coastal one. Mm -hmm. OK, so okay, that's wonderful. Uh, I, I suddenly have a, a idea. You know, uh, if you pull out, if you plot out all the Arctic uh, Arctic River, the elevation profile, like uh, all the Lena, Ober, Yeltsin, uh, Yukon, Mackenzie, if from the headwater, then go down to the middle ridge and all the way to the river mouth. So if you compare all of those to some other large river system, like the Mekong, like the Yangtze, like uh, Amazon, like the Mississippi River, you know, um, those uh, Arctic River may share some common thing. I, I, I don't know. I used to have those profile, but uh, it's not with me today. So maybe those Arctic River all the way from Oba, Yeltsin, you know, uh, Yukon, Mackenzie, maybe in the middle reach, they have very low gradient. Uh, you know, somebody need to do a very quick work. You know, mm -hmm. we can maybe find something. Then we can see how much the sediment yield from upper reach, how much from the middle reach, how much is stored in the middle reach. Maybe only a very small percentage able to reach to the low reach near the river mouth. Uh, yes, thank you, Paul. It's uh, it's important and interesting topic. So, and in terms of the again, that's so. In Russian rivers, these rivers of the Russia, that's very interesting picture. And the Yenisei, mm -hmm. uh, which is next to the west, we have the Baikal Lake, which completely cuts the most active erosion area of the Yenisei catchment. It's yes. Mongolia with all this, uh, you know, with all this urbanization and mining processes, with the, the huge uh, pastures and something. And the erosion here in this area is higher than on the whole other Yenisei territory, but it has zero effect on the Yenisei sediment <laughs> transfer. It's completely transferred by Baikal. Yeah, and this is why you guys started the lake. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's 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 interesting topic, yes. But in case of the land, there is this Vilu, which I mentioned, which is the, the Viluska reservoir, which is built on the very Mm, sediments, um, low sediments yield river, and there is no effect on that. So that's we have a dense Yenisei is much smaller with the sediment transfer, but uh, with the conditions of the erosion in the case, the Yenisei is much more efficient uh, okay. area than the land. But you see, the, that's what you said, yes, different conditions. Yeah, so we have a question from Paul. Oh, uh, oh, we're doing. Paul, do, uh, do, do you want to go ahead to ask him? Talk. 
Yeah, please unmute yourself. You can mute, unmute yourself. Hi, hi, Sergey. This is uh, Paul Overdoon in uh, Potsdam, and I just I I'm not sure if I I might have missed it. If you mentioned it, I'm sorry, but I, I'm wondering. Um, have you thought about looking at the edge of the delta um, in terms of it, what it might tell you about the overall sediment budget? Uh, are, are you aware of people who've looked at the at the position of the edge of the delta, this kind of a skirt, you know, beyond the beyond the edge? Would you expect that to expand if you have a a, a change in the in the positive budget? Uh, there's few also visions from the imagery that we have the profile along the delta, which uh, even if we have some decrease during some conditions, then at the submarine edge, at the edge of the delta, we have the very typical increase. And so this is the thing which uh, we really did not um, somehow at the moment capture or when we were driving from the Tixi to some oil scan back, we did not also didn't find this uh, on CEDO, but the images tell us this system. Maybe there is, uh, uh, that's, that, that's the issue. It's an interesting topic. And so of course, it's a dance completely can change what, what I talked about as far as if I, if I talked about this Lena budget and say that we are what we are doing the Lena budget and something like that. So a dance, it's not the, it's the budget which is, uh, not the edge of the delta. You see, we we came to only these areas which are not the really edge. As far as here, there's always problem also with the application of the satellite imagery. We or if we use these blue boxes, we have got the like 50 images. If we go further on, we will be much shorter in our data set so it's of course more than issue to on seed observation but yeah but it's it's interesting and maybe just one more comment uh we did look at um some of the coastline changes uh for example Muastach island in the laptop sea to look at how it depends on changes in in air temperature um, and we found a correlation between increasing mean summer uh, temperatures positive temperatures and the rate of coastal erosion. And it sort of seems to mimic what you guys are finding for the shoreline. So it would be really interesting to, to attach that to a rate of increase. Yes, Paul, I, I hope very much that we can somehow collaborate in terms of these uh, efforts we did and yeah, proceed with this exchange of the data. Thank you to, uh, to mention this. Okay, next, the next. Yeah, hi, Sergey, this is Bennett. Um, thanks for the nice talk, first of all. And um, I think I have a similar question to Paul, just um, again, mentioning that you showed here very nicely the strong spatial um, variability of sediment in the Lena River, and that it really depends on where you actually measure um, to, or yeah, that basically it's not it's not straightforward to measure the sediment concentration in the river when you don't know where to where to measure basically. And I was wondering if you think you can come up with better flux estimates of uh, sediment export using remote sensing, or is is there not enough images available or not enough information? Um. Yes, you see, Bennett, I, I think that's, um, first of all, that's the export of this like sediment flux for the LENA is always uh, the thing which is related to the QSUR or the most downstream station is something here, uh, which is already far from the, far, far from the, actually the export to the coast. And then I think that's, uh, and uh, in all, all the encyclopedias everywhere, the uh, Slena export is the uh, sediment loads related to some of these points. To, to uh, the, here, the Gouge station called uh, the Stolp Islands, 4.8 kilometers from upper from the Stolp Island. It's the official name of this Gouge or Kusu. So I believe that uh, this. Further knowledge is, of course, uh, at least the answer to the question of what's actually coming to the ocean itself. It's 
from the very beginning, we planned to build this picture and then we have to uh, move our blue boxes to the upper, upper from the coast itself, as far as the mentioned most methodological things. Uh, but uh, in combination maybe with also the coastal, we have some ideas on that. Uh, if we move forward with the, 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 with the ocean people who study the plumes in the, in the ocean, and then in combining both approaches and also the CDCP approaches, it is the it is the something like a direction for, for where, where where we move, of course. And uh, so I would say yes. I I hope we will be able then to go to flux estimate and to improve it. Mm. Okay, great. Um, Sergey, I remember one slide you showed during the winter. Um, low flow looks like the sediment, uh, you know, yield increased. Do you remember that slide? Mm -hmm. You compare the different uh, season, uh, not uh, earlier, earlier, maybe. Uh, earlier, so there was the Earlier. But I came almost to the beginning. Oh, um, I can't remember. Um, no, uh, in the maybe in the middle. You know, do you remember you you, you show uh, uh, in the uh, reservoir after the reservoir. You know, during the uh, uh, go yeah go move forward forward. I see if uh, we can not this one. Go down, go down, go down. Sorry, if it's the delta, then what's I have in the delta? Uh, 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 I can maybe cannot. Uh, yeah, I cannot find that, that, that. That's 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 fine. That's fine. So, by the way, uh, you have a, such a great uh, sampling, and is anybody at your collaborator, maybe a German colleague or maybe a local Russia colleague, studied uh, like uh, the carbon or nutrient? Um, so we are focusing on that. There's a separate geochemical part of all these studies uh -huh. where. We are working on you seen do you seen the real waters as well and uh, also uh, and uh, and with some ICP analysis for all these sampling campaigns so mm -hmm. to this hydrochemical also budgets and estimates and also of course there is a big focus on the to see the carbon science but it's uh, of course the more topic of for the colleagues. Uh, from the of the German colleagues, and I followed the talk on the Lena uh, on the carbon in the Delta, which was yeah. done by uh, in, in, in also your uh, webinar series by the German colleagues, and it was uh, much more detailed in terms of the loca localization of the studies. So I think um, that of course it's an issue. It's mostly an issue for uh, the studies on the Samolevsky, which is uh, done by the German colleagues with collaboration with the, the Yakutsk Permafrost Institute, as I know. And um, I don't know if uh, yes, that um, Paul and Bennett are here, and uh, we have these huge sampling boxes uh, which they did for the last few years. It's uh, with the DUC also samples. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. so I wouldn't talk about the, the, their study, but uh, yes, there's the carbon is within the scientific interest in the area, of course. Yeah, yeah, very good. So uh, we still have two more questions. And uh, so uh, uh, so next question, uh, uh, Ershad Shalki, you want to speak or? Uh, The question is, uh, uh, are there any reason for increased sedimentation rate of entering salt water and decreasing permafrost of the Lena River? As, uh, I'm not sure if that. Um, thank you for the question. And I would, I would not 
say something different so additional on this topic as far as as i said we unfortunately focused on not on the just cost and we didn't go some somewhere into the salt there is mm -hmm. a few studies what i know and recently published by our colleagues from um, different institutions uh, in few in the water journal and something some something else which exactly studied the plumes from the Lena river uh, in the ocean so i think it's uh, it is the, not the, the issue of our study source. We are hydrologists, we are surface hydrologists. We are not going to the salt water, but uh, mm -hmm. some, yeah, some, as far as the coastal abrasion is very important here, I think there is many things to mm -hmm. uh, in combination. Okay. The last question, uh, Professor Dadu, by you want to speak uh, your question? Yeah. Or you yeah, thank you. Uh, very nice uh, talk. So, I have a very simple question. Uh, just uh, in this slide, you show us uh, from the title, you, you say suspended sediment budget, and here we can see from the bigger uh, you have deposition and erosion. I mean, so I just wonder how to calculate suspended sediment budget. Oh, you mean uh, China Mohoji or Tibetan? Uh, I, 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 I just want to check this. Thank you, Professor Daidu Fan. Uh, just I would split to this picture, maybe to um, again to 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 more to go more deep in this methodological part of the. Uh, question so is the sediment budget to understand the uh, relation between the sediment loads on the in the cross section of the downstream reach compared to the sediment loads in the cross section in the upper reach so if we have some uh, one kilometer reach so the these values the positive values of the sediment budget means that there is the increase along the reach and the negative values of the sediment budget means that there is the decrease of the uh, sediment load. So, and that's, that's so what we based on ADCP survey? It is both the ADCP and what I showed it was uh, ADCP and also we used the, when we talked about the suspended sediment budget, we used the satellite imagery as far as the, that we have only from the uh, image we have on the suspended load. Mm. Yeah. But of course, uh, and it's also the, the, the thing that's from the satellite images we have on the sediment concentrations, and we just compare the concentrations. And from the ADCP, we compare the loads. So in both cases, uh, physically, of course, it's more um, relevant to go to the loads, to the mass, masses compared to concentration when we talk about budgets. So, but mm. uh, actually, the approach is the same. Nice. Mm. Okay, thank you. Mm. Thank you. I think a five hundred meter may be too short in terms of distance, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 too short, yeah. especially in the scale of the Lena River. Okay. Cool. Uh, well, I, I see Professor Liu Shuguang here. You know uh, your. <laughs> Uh, hi, uh, hi, uh, uh, hi, uh, 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 Dr. Sergei Chalov. Uh, so, so thank you. Uh, you are give, give us a very uh, nice presentation. Uh -huh. uh, I have two questions. The first question is uh, in the uh, basin, uh, Lena uh, has a river uh, we live it. Uh, my question is. After the contribution, uh, uh, the uh, after the Vilui uh, reservoir, uh, how many uh, sediment load or or a percent uh, sediment uh, from uh, river Vilui into the uh, river Lena? How many uh, decrease decrease? Uh, the, uh, the the first questions. The uh, the second question. Is uh, you uh, in in your presentation you uh, shows uh, you should announce the uh, sediment load 
uh, related with the temperature, with the te uh, air temperature. Uh, can you uh, tell us, uh, under the, according to your research, under the uh, climate change and the uh, human activities, how many uh, sediment, sediment load uh, or how many per, uh, percent uh, sediment decrease or increase from the uh, Lena River to the sea? I have uh, two questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Liu Shugan. I'm very happy to see you uh, and to hear you. Uh, yes. And uh, uh, I would start to answer the questions. Uh, I, I would show this additional slide, which wasn't in my presentation. It's actually the area which shows the uh, area where the Vilu River enters the Lena River. And you see that it's, uh, here you have the dates, and this is the Lena River, and this is the Vilu River. And Vilu um, cutting the mountain range here, and in terms of the size, it looks like it's completely smaller than the Lena River itself. Whereas the Lena River here, is uh, driving by and the sediment concentration here on the Lena River is driving by the confluence of Aldan and the Lena itself. And uh, these two, Aldan and Lena together, uh, make a much more significant uh, impact on the sediment budget in, the, in this reach compared to the Vilui. Vilui is something uh, really smaller to, compared to this uh, flux here. And, we will see only maybe a few situations when there is a, a signature of the sediment uh, concentration from the Vilui to in all this system. Uh, so I would say that it's first percent of the sediment load which uh, can really affect the Lena River from the Vilui. And especially after the construction of the dam, uh, the sediment load of the Vilui became, became even twice smaller. And as far as this mountain area here, there is no source to refill this uh, original natural sediment loads. And so that, that's actually the value is very, very, let's say clean uh, river compared to the Lena here on the, on the ridge. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and so uh, the... I, I suggest that uh, we can uh, compare it with the uh, three gorges uh, water uh, reservoir in, in Yangtze River and uh, the Vilui uh, in France uh, in the uh, Lena, the uh, sediment. No, uh, the future, <laughs> the future we can uh, we can do it. Uh -huh. This can be very interesting. Yes, the system, yeah, mm -hmm. can be, can be great. The this is the largest, uh, the, like the Sri George is the largest on the Yangtze. There's uh, the Velour Reservoir is the largest in the Lena catchment. So it's going to be important. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, thanks. And with the, yes, of course, this, as far as the trends for the climate, the air temperature increase. Uh, so I, I, I follow your second question. Uh, we have the increase of the air temperatures over the region in the north. And uh, of course, uh, having such kind of tendencies and relationships, we can expect the, uh, the future increase of the this contribution from the channel erosion to the sediment transfer and what's actually we see now over the uh, region in these arctic rivers and mm -hmm. uh, this is quite quite uh, possible then to follow with the same climate scenarios uh, to also make a prediction of this uh, changes in the future and actually what we also plan to do that's, that's nice yeah. thank you thank you Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a great. Uh, so okay, uh, I mean, uh, in a concluding, you know, uh, my uh, personally, I have studied many large river systems, all the way Yellow Yangtze, Mekong Red, Irrawaddy, you know. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, it, it's, uh, I'm not sure it's possible. Maybe we can initiate some kind of multi-country collaboration study, so from the source to sink. So you you have done a fantastic job uh, all the way from the headwater to the river mouth, but uh, we can pick up also collaboration with your colleague in Russia or colleague in China, and together understand how the uh, the sediment after they deliver to the ocean, the sedimentation rate change, 
the transport distribution and all the kind of uh, you know comprehensive studies, source to sink package study. Thank you, Paula. It's uh, we are definitely in. We would be happy to continue. And so, yeah, it's great that you arrange all this webinar to listen to each other and to yeah uh, discuss. That, the mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's keep in touch. Uh, you know, situation sometimes not easy, but uh, even scientifically, if we keep, uh, you know, keep in touch, uh, you know, we 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 are working together one day. We hope so. Yeah. Thank you very much for. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic uh, work. Thank you. I think uh, you know. Uh, um, have a have a great day. Okay. Have a great day. Yeah. Bye.